In this video you will learn how to build a custom interactive calendar in React without any additional libraries. And this is how it will look like. We have here a calendar, we can jump between days, we can even switch month, we can jump to today and select some day to see what meetings we need to do on this specific day. And we won't use any libraries to create such UI, but for sure we need a library to work with dates in JavaScript. Because the default working with dates is really painful, and there is a much better solution. A library which is called Luxon, and this is a friendly wrapper for JavaScript dates and times. So we can write our code like this, for example, date now, then set zone, minus weeks, end of day to ESO. And even if you don't understand Luxon, you can get what we're doing here, like we're getting the date now, then we're setting a time zone, then we're subtracting one week from this date, and we're getting the end of the day. As you can see, the code is extremely readable and easy to support, and it will help us a lot in order to create interactive calendar with React. And here I already prepared for us an empty project. As you can see, I have an app component where I just render a calendar component. The only thing is I injected CSS in this component and here is some CSS for our feature. And you can download this CSS from the source code in the description under the video. So our first step here is to install Luxon library. And additionally here I want to install one more library which is called class names. It will help us to generate easier classes for React. Two most important things for our calendar is to prepare an array of weekdays and secondly all dates of the month. And in order to do that I want to jump to Luxon and inside console we have access to Luxon directly. So I can write here luxon.info and inside info we have weekdays. As you can see here, this is a function, and we are getting here an array starting from Monday to Sunday. This is almost what we want, but we need them in a short format. This is why here we are providing short, and we are getting a nice array of these strings. So here inside our calendar we can get weekdays by calling info, and info is coming from Luxon, dot weekdays, and this is a function where we are providing short inside. Additionally here we need to get a reference to today. So here let's save today by calling daytime and it also is coming from luxon.local. So it will generate for us a daytime that we can use. We can try it in the console. As you can see we're getting a daytime object with lots of properties. And what is interesting we can do different things with it. Like for example minus weeks one. And we're subtracting one week from our date. Now here we can call toString in order to convert our date to a stringified date. Which actually means it is really comfortable to store all our dates as daytime. So we have today, now we need to know the first date of the month. And actually this I want to store in the state because we need to change it when we are jumping between months. This is why here let's create a state first day of active month. And here we need a setter so it is set first day of active month. And here we have a use state hook where inside we can provide today dot start of month. By default our calendar will show a month with today inside. This is why here we are getting today and the first day of active month, which means the first of current month, will be this date. We can console log it here. I want to just write console log first date of the month to string. Let's have a look in browser. As you can see, we're getting 1st of April, which is the first date of the month. Now we need to prepare an array of dates from the beginning of the month to the end of the month. But it must include dates of the previous month or next month if the start or end of the month is not at the beginning or the end of the week. How can we do that? Obviously with Luxon, we can create here an array days of month and in order to do that, we are using interval from Luxon dot from date times, and inside we must provide two dates. So the first date will be a start of the month, and the next one will be an end of the month. So here we can take first day of active month, but here we want to use start of week. And start of week will return for us the starting date of the week, because our month might not be starting from Monday. 
And after this we can use first day of the month, dot, end of month, end of week. Let's have a look what we are getting. So here I am console logging days of month. And as you can see in the console we are getting an interval with two dates. This is our start date and end date. And as you can see here our start is a daytime and end is a daytime. What we want to do now, we want to split this interval by a single day. This is why here on our from day times we can apply split by. And here let's provide day 1. And let's have a look what we are getting. As you can see now we are getting an interval between every each day. And here we are getting 35 numbers which is exactly what we want. And now from every single interval we just want to read a start of this interval. Which actually means after split we can use here map where get an access to our day and we can just return day.start. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just want to let you know that I have a membership here on the channel that you can join to support me. It will give you access to the new videos earlier, emojis and priority replies to your comments. Now let's jump back into the video. Let's have a look now in browser, as you can see we are getting a nice daytime. And daytime is a typical looks on date, we can read the whole value from it, or we can stringify it when we need this. So this is exactly what we want to render, these are our squares with dates that you will see in the calendar. And as you can see Luxon allows us in three lines of code generate such array. So let's start with some rendering. What we want to return here is some markup. And first of all we will have div with class name calendar container. Inside we will have div with class name calendar and then a headline. So here will be class name calendar headline. And inside on the left we want to render our active month. So here will be div class name calendar headline month. And then inside we can render first day of the month, this is our date, and we can read dot month short, this is a short label of the current month of this specific date. After this comma and we want to render our first day of month dot year. As you can see in browser we successfully rendered that it is April 2024. After this we want to render controls on the right, so it will be div class name, calendar, headline, controls. And inside will be a div with previous button. So here will be class name, calendar, headline, control. With arrow to the left, I will copy it and paste an arrow to the right. And in between we want today. So here let's write our text today. And additionally we need one more class. It will be calendar, headline, controls, today. As you can see in browser our buttons are rendered and we see today label. After our headline we need to render labels for every weekday. So here will be a div with class name, calendar, weeks, grid. And just to remind you here on the top we have an array with all our days and we can just render them with map. So here will be weekdays map, we are getting access to every single weekday. And we also need here weekday index. And now inside we can simply render a div with key weekday index and class name calendar weeks grid cell. And inside we can simply render a variable weekday. Let's have a look in browser. As you can see, we rendered our days from Monday to Sunday. After our weeks grid, we need a calendar grid. So here will be our calendar grid class. And we want to loop through our days of month. So here is a map for days of month. We have access for specific day of month. And we also have an index, so day of month index. Now here we want to render a div and provide a key inside. And it will be day of month index. And here I want to provide a class name, calendar grid cell. And inside the div we can render day of month dot day. And this is just a number. As you can see in browser we successfully rendered the whole array as a grid. The next feature that we need to do is render a list of meetings on the right of our calendar. This is why after calendar I want to create a div with class name schedule. But the main problem is our calendar does not get any information regarding any meetings. This is why here inside as a prop I want to provide meetings. And we must create them inside app. So let's create here a variable meetings and we want to store it as an object where keys is a specific day. 
Let's create some meetings in 2024 in April 5th. And here will be an array of our meetings. For example, drink coffee, learn react and sleep. Now I want to copy paste exactly the same line for another date. Let's say it is 6th of April and we're learning here Angular. Now we must provide our meetings as a prop to our calendar. So inside calendar we're getting meetings as a prop, but we don't just render meetings for the specific date. As you can see by default, we don't have any date selected. So we must store in the state the selected date and by default it must be null. So let's create here something like active day and set active day. And it will be a use state hook and by default we have null. And additionally here I want a variable of meetings for the current active date. So let's create here active day meetings. And we're trying to read from our meetings active day, which can be null. This is why here is question mark dot to iso date. And what it will do, it will convert it in exactly this format that you see here. And if this is null, then we want to return an empty array. In this case, our active day meetings will never fail and it will always have at least an empty array. With this information, we can render our schedule. So first of all, here we have a headline. So here will be schedule headline. And inside, first of all, we render please select a day label if we don't have an active day. So here we can check if our active day equals null, then we want to render a div please select a day. Now I want to copy paste this code and change it just if we have a day, then we want to render the day number. So here will be active day dot to locale string and inside we can provide date time dot date medium. And as you can see, there are lots of possibilities to format the date. And this function won't just format your date in English, but at any language which you want. This is why it is a string with locale. As you can see in browser, we successfully rendered please select day because we didn't select any day. After our headline, let's render our content. So here will be a div. And the first case we want to render when we don't have any meetings for this day. So if we have an active day and active day meetings length equals zero, then we want to render a div no planned meetings today. Now we can copy paste this code, but in this case we are checking that length must be bigger than zero, so we have meetings. Then we want to do a map here. And in order to render a map, you need to have at least one parent. This is why here now we can take active day meetings, map through them, get access to the meeting and also meeting index because this is just a string. And inside we want to render a div with our key, which will be meeting index. And I'm rendering a meeting inside. So we either render no planned meetings or we're rendering a list of meetings. But here is the problem. We didn't implement the click event on the specific day. As you can see, here is our div and let's attach here a click. So we want a non-click event. And what we want to do here, we simply want to set active day. And we're providing day of month, which we're currently rendering. Let's check in browser. I'm reloading the page. I'm selecting a day and we're getting an error. And as you can see here, the error is active day to local string is not a function. This is completely correct. I made here a typo. It is to locale string, not local string. Let's reload again. As you can see, no errors this time. We have our grid. I can click on specific day. And as you can see, we're rendering 5th April. And here is the list of our meetings. If I'm clicking on the day where we don't have meetings, then we're showing no planned meetings today. One more feature that we're missing is highlighting an active day. And in order to do that, I want to use this second library, which is called class names. This is why here let's import class names from class names. And then let's scroll to our day with click. As you can see here, we just rendered one class name calendar grid cell, but here I want to write more of them. This is why here inside our class name, I want to provide class names and an object inside. And now here as key, we can set specific names, like for example, class grid cell. And as a value, we're providing true or false. This is why here we can remove this line. And now this code will generate for us a string calendar grid cell. It doesn't make any sense, obviously, but we want to attach here several classes. And first of all, what I want to do, I want to highlight inactive dates of the month as gray. 
because here this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are not the part of the April, it is already May, but they are not highlighted. This is why here what we can do, we can write here calendar grid cell inactive, and as a value we can check that day of month dot month should not equal first day of active month dot month, which actually means we are checking that the day that we are rendering has not the same month as the month of current active month. Let's reload the page, as you can see now these dates are grayed out because they don't belong to the current month. And additionally we wanted to highlight our cell as active. This is why here let's write calendar grid cell active and the value will be active day and it can be now, this is why question mark, dot to is a date, we already used that, and we want to compare it with day of month, dot to is a date, which actually means we are getting two strings from these dates, and we are comparing them. Let's have a look. As you can see, 19th is selected now, because this is our active date. And the last feature that we are missing is this navigation. We need to go to previous, go to next, and go to today. This is why here on the top I want to create three additional functions. Let's create first of all go to previous month and this is a function and what we need to do here we simply need to change this first day of the month to the previous one. So we can just call here a setter set first day of the month and we're providing inside first day of the month this is our current month dot minus and inside we are providing an object with field month1 and this will make minus one month so we will have the first of March. Now I want to copy paste this function and create go to next month and here we are doing exactly the same but instead of minus we are doing plus and the last one here will be go to today. So let's name it go to today and instead of this logic we will simply use here today we already have this variable dot start of month. So our three functions are ready, we can simply call them on our controls. So here is our previous, we can just write on click and here we are calling our function go to previous month. Now we can copy paste this logic and write it inside next month. So here will be go to next. And the last one here on today, we can provide an on click and write go to today. So our click handlers are there, let's have a look. I will click previous and as you can see we rendered March and these are days of March and here I am jumping to the next and we are in the April again. Now I will change our month for example for January and I will click today. As you can see we are in April again and our 19th is still selected. So here is how you implement calendar inside React without any additional libraries, but if you are also interested in implementing pagination without any libraries in React, make sure to check this video also.